Welcome back everybody. No, this is not Canada and we're not shooting an episode for DP Review TV. However, we are out uh, for a test of the Leica lenses on a modern camera. So those are the vintage M lenses that I have uh, that you know from my other videos. And I found out that, that there's an adapter for the Canon EOS R uh, to use those lenses on that camera uh, or any RF camera for that matter. Uh, the EOS R is my, my workhorse that I use for everyday uh, work. So um, I was very interested to see how those vintage lenses would perform on a modern pretty high resolution body. Um, so I bought this adapter and now we're out and about in winter wonderland to see what kind of image quality we can get from that. So let's go and shoot some frames. So this is what it looks like with the 50mm adapter to the EOS R. This is the adapter here. So as you can read, it's made in Germany, so that's probably why it's so expensive. Um, and yeah, it looks kind of weird. Uh, definitely not right somehow. <laughs> uh, but at least it feels good in the hand. It's nice to use, nice to focus. Uh, very nice to focus through the viewfinder with focus peaking. It's very easy. and. Um, the 90mm, uh, because it's black and a little bit bigger, actually looks kind of nice on the camera and feels very nice as well. And uh, the 35 with the goggles on looks very weird, very strange. Uh, you'll see that later in the video. But uh, yeah, that's what it looks like. Alright, so we've been here a couple of hours, shot some frames and it's freezing out here so 
let's head back home and check those images out in Lightroom. So as it turns out, just a couple of days later, we actually got some really nice weather. And I took the opportunity to go out again and collect a couple more images, uh, just to have a wider range of subjects and, and images in general to see how these lenses performed. And also, I thought it would have been a bit boring to just have that narrow range of subjects from that one trip you just saw. Uh, the second one was actually much more successful in terms of the images I got out of it. Unfortunately, I didn't film it, but uh, we can still look at the images in Lightroom. So yeah, I'll just click through some of those and show you some examples. So um, you might remember this one from the video. This is shot with the 35 millimeter and very close. I think I try to get in as close as possible, uh, which is always a challenge with the Leica M lenses. Just because of their optical design, it's just they are limited in terms of uh, minimum focus distance. So you can't, many times you can't get as close to the subject as you would like to, or as I would like to. Maybe I'm just used to getting really close, I don't know. Sometimes, yeah, I, I find myself uh, just shooting at minimum focus distance and just moving back and forth, uh, testing where the limit is and then shooting at that. Yeah, in terms of sharpness, it's pretty nice. Nice, soft, out of focus background, uh, the snow and, uh, you know, this kind of busyness is something we've, we've seen before in the other videos. This is kind of a nice one with the contrast of colors in here and also that light cloud coming from the edge up there. Uh, and, you know, that whole kind of whoosh feeling in there, for lack of better words is supported by, by those branches here, pointing in the same direction. Yeah, quite nice, I think. If we zoom in, um, you'll note that it is not quite sharp. I think, yeah, that's where the sharpness is here. And that's a theme that you may recognize throughout the video with sharpness, so keep that in mind. Now this is kind of a nice moment here with the kid walking on, on the walls, which you're actually not supposed to do, but everybody does it anyway. I wish that there was a bit more separation between him and the trees back there. So maybe a little bit, little opening here would have been perfect. Or just if the jacket was a bit more yellow, um, I think we might be able to fix that in Photoshop if we wanted to. But um, yeah, just a, a nice images with, you know, that flowing uh, lines in there. I kind of like that and, and him walking. So here I try to um, focus on this very tiny uh, shell here. Um, this is with the 35 millimeter. And then there's another one that I took with the 90 just to compare. That was really hard actually focusing on there because uh, as you can see, it's, it's a shot wide open as well. And um, yeah, seeing the focus peaking on just the exact spot was not easy. I think I managed somewhat. I think it's a little bit off. Uh, it's not quite as sharp, but uh, yeah. And then we have this one. And that's actually a nicer one, I think. That's with the 90 millimeter. And let's check. Yeah, that's actually, I think I couldn't have done that better than, than it is now. So sharpness is spot on. It is a little bit soft. The lenses tend to be a tiny bit soft at, at their wide open setting. Uh, so if you shoot them at f2, sometimes you get really nice crisp sharpness. Sometimes, depending on the subject, it, it just looks a, a little bit soft. But yeah, in that case, I think it's, it's all good. And just, yeah, that natural fall off in, into the into the, uh, the unsharp background is, is pretty cool. So with this one, I tried to get really close. I, I shot that one at like, I don't know, F11 or something, uh, just to really see the pure sharpness potential of these lenses. And um, if we zoom in here, I think that's pretty impressive. Uh, that just, just looks like, it looks really lifelike uh, especially with that color on here, um, really popping. And in terms of sharpness, it's, there's, there's nothing to be desired. So yeah, 
pretty pretty impressed at how much resolution there is. So uh, the resolution of, of the EOS R is absolutely no problem for those lenses. All right, so let's move into some cityscapes. Uh, what have we got here? So kind of an abstract thing going here. Let's check sharpness. That looks very good indeed. Plenty of detail in there. But yeah, let's let's check the edges here. Yeah, you can you can see it going out of focus a bit here, but that might just be the, the depth of field going. It's nice and sharp down here actually. Nice one. So I kind of like this one, just the way the shadow flows down here. And obviously myself in the picture, so it must be great. Um, <laughs> but if we look closely, uh, you can see that I missed focus here. There's no area that is really in focus. I think maybe here somewhere. And like I said, that's a common theme that I noticed um, is that the camera would fool me into thinking my images are in focus when they are actually not. And I think it's, maybe it's something with the focus peaking in the camera. Maybe it's just the sensitivity is, is, is too high or maybe I can even change that setting. I don't even know, to be honest. Yeah, I think that's something just that you have to get used to. Um, so just be aware of that if you, if you try it yourself. So here, this is obviously retouched, so that was not the natural color of the sky, but uh, I kind of like it in that case. We have a little uh, rainbow flare going on here. Uh, I did not notice that when shooting, but I think other lenses do that as well, so that's all right. Uh, there's no chromatic aberrations on those power lines here as far as I can tell. Yeah, really no problem at all. And. Yeah, overall, kind of a nice image. I can't see much distortion either, so quite happy with that. Then I found this poor guy and I had the 35 millimeter on there and just tried to get in real close, wide open at f2 and see what kind of uh, sharpness and separation I would get. And um, in terms of sharpness, uh, it's once again a little bit soft also, it's just so narrow. I, I feel like, um, look at that effect here. That's a crazy one. See that glittering there and that kind of, uh, you know, what, what do you even call that? Like reflections. I've never seen that before. That's very, very unique. So yeah, I think, you know, things like that, I mean, it's questionable if you would even see that uh, zoomed out or if that image was printed. Uh, but, you know, that's just maybe a reason to use those lenses in the first place. It's just a kind of a unique characteristic, um, some unique quirks and nice imperfections that you wouldn't get in, in modern day lenses. Also, look at that bokeh back here. <laughs> that is absolutely crazy. You don't even notice that when you're zoomed out, but I mean, look at that. That's really intense, I think. Uh, but yeah, um, what, I was, what I was going to say is I always feel like those lenses at f2 really, really narrow in terms of depth of field, almost like a 1.4 lens usually would be. Uh, I have an f2 lens from Canon for the EOS R and I feel it's not that kind of narrow in terms of depth of field. So maybe that's the thing, maybe it's just subjective, I don't know. This one was shot on the 90 millimeter, nice and sharp again. If you look at that water rendition, that's really perfect. It looks so nice actually, doesn't it? You see some chromatic aberration here in, in those sparkles and those reflections but uh, and here as well but you know you can fix that it's no problem and no one will get in as close and critique it that way so anyway so 
yeah, nice one. So I can absolutely recommend using one of these. Um, maybe get a cheaper one first, uh, see if that works just as well. I think they should. Um, but yeah, those vintage lenses on, on the modern body handled really nicely and performed fantastic. I couldn't find any issue with them. And um, I mean, those adapters have been around for, for a while. I just haven't seen any video of someone using the M lenses on the EOS R system. And uh, I suspect that those adapters might be pretty new because the R system is pretty new as well. So uh, that's what I wanted to try. Um, but I suppose they should be fun on any modern camera, uh, you know, just with an EVF and focus peaking. It's just a different way of using them and playing with them, uh, which is fun and engaging. And, you know, if you already have a camera and the lenses, it's just a matter of getting the missing puzzle piece um, to uh, just unlock a whole new range of possibilities uh, to play with your gear. So that's pretty cool. As always, thanks for watching, hit the thumbs below, get subscribed if you like, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!